Hi everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio. And if you have been watching my community tab, you know that once in a while I take a poll and for this week's video, you all voted that you would most like to see how to paint snowy effects in the background. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. So let's jump right into this video and talk about how you can create snow effects using four different techniques and lots of bonus tips included too, by the way. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk about this first technique that I'm most excited about because I just learned about this technique myself and that is using masking on wet paper. I like to use Winsor & Newton removable masking. And did you know that masking goes bad over time? When it loses that ammonia smell, it's probably time to toss it. So that's bonus tip number one. If your masking doesn't smell like ammonia anymore, it's time to get a new bottle. So anyway, I moistened my paper to the glistening stage, which I've made videos about all this lingo about watercolor paper moisture and paint consistency in my first series videos. So be sure to check out those basics and I'll link the playlist here. I let the paper dry a bit, but it's still pretty glistening when I take an old brush, get it wet, rub it in soap to protect the bristles, by the way, ding, ding, bonus tip number two, and splat it into wet paper. Yes, that's right, folks. You splat masking on wet paper. What? Who knew you could even do that? So bonus tip number three is use good paper for this and all the following techniques I'm going to show you because they won't necessarily work on just any old paper. I work mostly on Arsh Cold Press 140 pound. For this polar bear painting, I also splatted masking on dry paper, which resulted in smaller, sharper, more star-like marks. But if you want stars, splat your masking on dry paper. So now look at how this looks when we take the masking off. Those splats look like those gorgeous big snowflakes you get when the weather conditions are just perfect. Soft, big fluffs of snow. I mean, I just want to put my tongue out and just lick them, but I won't do that right now because I don't want to get a coffee smear on my painting. <laughs> but anyway, let's look at technique number two. And this is a way to get more snowy effects in your background from salt effects. I had no plans of showing this painting of this Siamese cat to the world because I don't think I'm in love with it, at least in this iteration, but the background had really good dramatic snowy background results, so I will put my pride aside and show you all for the good of your watercolor snow painting knowledge. And here's bonus tip number four, by the way. You have to use paint that responds well to this technique. For this painting, I'm using a combination of indigo blue, which is actually a convenience mix of phthalo blue and lamp black. And those are both paints that have pretty good cauliflowering effects, which that means they'll probably also have good salt effects. If I would have used ultramarine blue, for example, I wouldn't have gotten nearly as snowy of effects because that paint is really hard to get it to cauliflower and it also doesn't respond to salt very well. But because I used the right paper and the right paint, the snowy effects in this background came out really well. But now let's talk about the actual technique I used that was so dramatic and that is using a few pieces of kosher salt here and there. So bonus tip number five, I don't put the salt down at just any old time. I wait till it dries a tiny bit past very glistening stage to when it's about to enter buckling and then put the salt down. If you put the salt down when it's really, really wet, you just get big soft atmospheric effects or no effects at all. But if you wait a bit, the salt will make harder, more dramatic effects that could be considered to have the look of falling snow. And bonus tip number six, use a variety of salt for different snow sizes. Kosher salt will give you larger flakes and table salt will give you smaller flakes and, and variety of sizes in a painting, by the way, is a secret to beauty. So experiment with different sizes. But please let me reiterate, don't use too much salt. We're just talking about a few grains, not a teaspoonful. 
Now let's look at a softer snowy background result I achieved when I painted this panda. Different paint consistencies paired with different paper dryness levels can give you wildly different effects. And I made a video just about that, which I will link here, which will cue it up for you, but not take you out of this video until you're done watching this video. But technique number three is to use water splats to create a falling snow effect. Oh, and let me give you another bonus tip. You've got to get these effects in the first wash. If you paint a wash, let it dry, and then put paint over that and try to get these salt effects or the next technique that I'm going to tell you about, it will not work nearly as well. So you have to get these techniques and these effects in the first wash of your painting. Let's look at how I did this panda background. So what you see me doing here is getting clear water again, just like I did in the Siamese cat painting. And then I'm going in with a bit of tea consistency indigo blue. And notice how I'm leaving some white areas of the paper to shine through. So I'm kind of painting around tufts of whiteness, if you will. And I'm using really tea consistency paint on fairly wet paper. So I'm getting everything really loose and dreamy in this first wash of the painting. I'm putting a few darker strokes here and there, but it's mostly tea consistency paint. And I left blotches of the white paper shining through to give a snowy, dreamy look. And then I work on painting the rest of the panda. And what I'm actually doing is just biding my time for the paper to reach into a buckling stage or a drier stage past glistening to what I call the buckling stage. So I went ahead and painted that ear. I was just trying to keep myself busy because I do get impatient and I will splat water before it's time. But what I'm gonna do next is splat water. And when you splat water, there it goes, then you get these really interesting dreamy effects that looks like falling snow, very soft falling snow. And you can also see that I put kosher salt on this painting. And do you notice I didn't put a lot of kosher salt, did I? Just like I was talking about in the last painting, just a few sprinkles here and there. And what I do with the splats with my fingers is I dip my fingers in the water, drip off the excess water, and then forcefully splat the water onto my painting. And then I let that create cauliflowers. Again, these cauliflowers will not work if you do them when the paper is too wet if you do them during the second wash or the third wash of the painting, or if you use the wrong paint. So just remember, you've got to get several things right for these little cauliflower effects to work really well. And then what you're gonna see me do next is to do a second splat. So that paper is still wet, but it's getting to be pretty dry buckling. So just damp to the to the touch as I paint the rest of this panda's body in. Again, I'm just biding my time because really I want to get that really special atmospheric snowy background behind this panda because it is a Christmas winter painting. And there goes that second round of splats. I even put some splats onto the panda to make him look like there's snow falling onto his black fur. So I did a second round of splats when the paper was drier, but still pretty damp so that I'll get harsher, more high contrast splats that look like snow. And by the way, be sure to check out my community tab now and again, because I post free stuff in my community tab once in a while. And you can go there now and scroll through all the free things that I've offered in the past. All right, for this last example, I want to show you Let's look at this painting, which I don't have footage of because I painted it in 2004. And that is to use either white gouache or Chinese white watercolor, which is what I did. And the trick to doing this is to get your background dark enough. So you see how I painted that blue first? So I painted that blue first and got it pretty dark, at least in areas, let all that dry. And then when everything was pretty much dry and done, I went in with my white gouache. And you can see how in some areas I painted big splotches of white. And then in other places, I let everything completely dry and then just used a splatter technique by splatting white gouache 
with water mixed in, of course, to create all these fine little snowy particles. And I really think this came out really beautifully. So I didn't want to skip showing this to you. So that's my last and final technique. Thank you again so much for joining me on this tutorial. And if you enjoy painting loose animals in a soft, dreamy way, you might enjoy my Patreon where you can watch tutorials ad free from start to finish in real time so you can paint along with me and you get free downloadables with those tutorials. So you can go to the link here and look at my library and see what tutorials I have to see if you're interested in that. So if you like my paintings, you might enjoy those tutorials and I'd love to have you join me. But if it's not your cup of tea, then I'd love it if you would like this video, go check out some of my other content and come chat me up in the comments because all of that helps me keep this YouTube channel going and bringing you free content about every week. I try every week. <laughs> so thank you so much again for joining. Now go watercolor your world and I'll see you next week. Bye everybody. I just still feel awkward, you know? I don't know. Kitty, you help though. You help. Thanks for, thanks for being my comfort animal. <laughs>